Hi everyone. Together with my friend and co-partner Howard, we send our love and pray the Lord continue to watch over you and to grant you peace. Well, what extraordinary days we are living in. I want to share with you a picture. I'm sure you've seen a 400 meter relay race where a baton is passed between the runners of the team. And when the last runner has passed the baton, they run the final leg known as the home straight to get across the finish line. Well, in a similar way, it has been granted to you and I to finish the race that began 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. That is to say, I believe we are truly on the home straight in these days. We're on the home straight running the race to complete the race before the Lord's return. And we've received from our forefathers the baton of faith that was handed to us. May we in this generation finish well. In 2016, Howard and I had already been ministering together and individually for several years in different nations, and we were carrying the message of the bride. And we were carrying the message with a call to awaken her and romance her so that she might be prepared for the soon return of our bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ. Then in 2016, as I was seeking the Lord and I was studying Revelation 22 verse 17, which says, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. It was then I received the founding vision for Call to Come. The Spirit in me was challenging me to revisit this verse. It was familiar to me, yet we've always seen this as something that will happen in the future when the Lord returns, but not as an instruction of something that we need to do now. Well, this was the presumption that I'd had and it was what was being challenged by the Spirit. And the Lord said, I want my bride to call upon me to come now. I saw visions of people calling upon the Lord to come in large and small gatherings, thinking, Lord, why isn't this happening already? And I understood that the bride isn't crying come because she's not ready. And what bride would call upon the bridegroom to come before she's ready? Well, here is the revelation that I remember being dropped into my spirit. The Lord said, calling come isn't something that happens at the end of my bride getting ready, but at the beginning. She can't get ready until she calls come. Because when she calls come, she is aligning herself with my spirit, who has always been saying come. When my bride calls for me to come, I will send the Holy Spirit again to anoint her and to help her to get dressed. I remember asking the Lord about this and whether it could be supported in Scripture. And then all of a sudden, it was like the unveiling of something that I'd never seen before, though I knew this first well. It was unveiling of something so precious. And I wondered why I'd never seen it before. But the answer was in the same verse, that's Revelation twenty two seventeen, which goes on to say, Let the one who hears say, Come. And then the Apostle John, right at the end of Revelation, the, the final prayer, the summation of all Scripture, closes with this very prayer when he says, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Wow. I remember being changed and charged with the Spirit. I called Howard and shared this with him, what I felt the Lord was saying, and it resonated with him also. And on that basis, we came back together with a fresh mandate, which has grown into the movement of call to come as it is today. You know, the early church had this understanding and revelation of calling upon the Lord to come. They used the Aramaic word Maranatha. And they used it as a way of greeting one another. And it means both our Lord has come and also our Lord come. It was a statement of truth that the Lord has come, but it was also a prayer, Lord come. 
and they greeted each other with this declaration of assurance and prayer of desire, especially in the persecution and severe trials that they faced at that time. This prayer kept their hopes alive on the promise that Jesus said one day he would return for them. This prayer was part of the DNA of the early church, and it gave them solidarity in an era of tribulation. Whenever and wherever Howard and I have ministered around the world since we received this vision, we have shared this message that we should cry, come. Our experience in gatherings in different nations has been truly wonderful as this cry, this longing of the heart of the bride for her bridegroom has been released and activated. When the bride calls come, there's something deep in the heart of every believer that rises to the surface. A resonance deep within our spirit that lifts us up into the presence of the Lord. Gatherings of the bride, calling come, have charged the atmosphere with an anointing that is unique and compelling. Oh, how we need this anointing to be poured out upon the bride today. We are not yet fully equipped or clothed as we should be. But when we cry, come, we are awakening ourselves into our bridal identity. We are aligning our hearts with his. We are agreeing with the spirit who's always been saying, come. And we are beginning to get dressed. When we cry, come, it's not a symbol that we are ready, but that we want to get ready and that we are getting ready. It's the greatest witness of all and the prayer that our bridegroom Jesus Christ longs to hear more than any other. Because when heaven hears the bride calling come, when Jesus hears his bride that he died for calling his name, then heaven knows that the time is drawing near for the bridegroom to return and complete the mystery hidden for ages. The eternal purpose of God that we, we should be included in the glory of oneness that exists in the Godhead through the act of a marriage union with Jesus Christ, who is both God and man. Can you imagine a national stadium filled with the bride in that nation coming together not only for worship and repentance and praise God that they do, but also to call upon the bridegroom to come. Hmm. What do you think would happen in such a gathering? You know, the Lord would not withhold anything from his bride when he knows that her heart is for him. And he extends the golden scepter towards her and he says, ask me. Ask me for anything, even up to half my kingdom. This is the call to come vision, and it's our mandate. Our prayer is that it would resonate in your heart as it does ours, so that around the world we might arise as the glorious bride in this day, ready for our bridegroom Jesus to return. And more, that just as Peter writes, that we might hasten the day of his coming. Until next time, I think the appropriate prayer is Maranatha.